Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started right now. We'd like to welcome everybody to the coach's office here with uh, Coach Angel, myself. And uh, we have today a special guest in the room in the coach's office. We got uh, Bill McCauley with 5206602 oh, Sports Talk. We got him in the house. I'd like to welcome him here. Thank you, Bill, for being here today with us. So. Oh, I was geeked up to do it as soon yeah. as you called me. <laughs> I was like, man, how am I going to get Bill? I know there's a lot of games this week on the turn, the basketball tournament going on. And, uh, you know, he got the San Diego State thing flowing right here, <laughs> right there. So you can show it off. <laughs> so big game with San Diego State. You know, what would you think about it, Coach? They uh, they definitely came to play. I mean, honestly, I, I, I thought that they were going to lose to Alabama. I yeah. mean, you know, they're the number one of the number one seeds, the four, four number one seeds, and uh, they've been playing well. And, and, and San Diego took it, basically took it to them. They were really physical with them, which normally you don't see with a West Coast team. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pac-12 or Mountain West or West Coast Conference and stuff, they play more of a finesse basketball. But uh, yeah. they were very, very physical with Alabama, and I think they kind of knocked them off their block, and I don't think the Alabama was ready for it. Yeah, I think they they stayed pretty fired up in the paint uh, today. I mean, scoring a lot of points from mm -hmm. the top of the key. You know, um, um, it's good passing. They moved the ball around a lot, and, and um, they were they were shooting pretty. Uh, they were pretty consistent from the field. Oh, like one yeah. guard, he didn't miss a shot all game, whether it was a free throw or a field goal. He was yeah. he was perfect. It was yeah, I knew. it was a back and forth, back and forth, and then uh, that little call at the end. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know. I uh, some people say just let it fly, but at the same time, I think you got to. You gotta still call the game, you know. It's, it's, I can see it both ways. I can see it from a coach's standpoint. Where yeah. and and I think the uh, the Creighton coach had a good comment. He said, "Had you called that foul the whole game, I would have been okay with it." Yeah. But you didn't. I mean, you let them basically play football the first half and just you know. Yeah. And then you call that foul with and and Creighton or excuse me and and uh, Creighton didn't have any time. For a response, because you know what they put one point two seconds. Yeah, it was on one point two. But you're taking it a, all the way out under your basket, you know. And you, and you had the yeah. you know the football pass, which you know yeah. ninety nine times out of a hundred isn't going to work. Yeah, Leitner and them got lucky on yeah. that one, right? The Duke. <laughs> but yeah, no. So um, I know you had a busy weekend this weekend up in Phoenix, uh, watching a little bit of baseball. Um, uh, watching the, the Hurricanes team out there. Mm -hmm. um, Love the Hurricanes. They were on our show. Uh, Anytime that we have a guest on our show, we always hashtag it our guys yeah. or five two zero kids, five two zero sports talk kids or six zero two sports talk kids, depending on where we're at. Yeah, yeah, I, was, I got I got a little sunburn. Worked on my tan today out out at Kino. We had the the Battle of Tucson, hosted by the Pitbulls organization that um, with Dexter, Coach Dexter sure. out there doing their thing. Um, a lot of fun uh, Saturday and Sunday. That sun was nice. Weather was perfect for it. Oh, it was. It's a pretty good time for these kids, but, you know, well, you know, that was my, kind of my weekend right there. But, you know, I mean, let's do what we came here to do. Sounds and good. let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Mr. Bill McCullough. And, <laughs> and we want to find out, you know, um, you know, first and foremost, I want to say, I mean, I'm 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 doing this right here because, you know, I was like, I, I seen you doing this from the from, you know, at the beginning and. You've been doing it for a while, and I was like, seven that's, years that's, almost. Yeah. June, June will be seven years. I was like, that's 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 something interesting to do. I mean, I, I would, you know, I would like to get into it, and uh, you know, like I said, I would, I would watch some of your show. I'm like, you know, that's that's pretty fun. I would like, you know, I would like to try and do that, but it, it is hard as hell. Uh, There's a lot of work. Easy. Yeah, that, it's not like I just sit down in a chair and start talking. There's yeah. a lot of prep work. You got to look at people's records. You kind of got to talk to the coaches during the week uh, or the organization if it's a club team. And, and uh, just kind of get a feel for it, so you're, you know, you're asking intelligent questions, but you're also asking uh, questions that aren't going to, you know, overwhelm like an eight year old or a nine year old on a football show or something yeah. like that. Now, did you go to school here in Tucson? Or you're you're from Tucson? I'm from San Diego, I, but I did grow up here. My dad was yeah. in the Navy, and that's that's why. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I grew up here. I went to all, all the schools I went to are gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that old, but I went to Fort Lowell Elementary on Pima yes. uh, and Rosemont, and then uh, that's that's a medical plaza now. Uh, went over to Townsend Junior High, which was just uh, south of TMC Hospital. Yeah, that's Pima Medical now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I went to Palo Verde Christian when the campus was on uh, Palo Verde and Seneca. It was right behind the northeast corner of the fence at Catalina. Okay. And I actually started at Catalina, and uh, the that was a brand new school. Palo Verde Christian was a brand new school, and uh, the coach and the athletic director came over and watched me play a couple of freshman games, 
and I talked to my father, who was on the Tucson Fire Department, and he says, you know, can we get your kid over here? And he says, I'll talk to him, but it's his decision. And uh, yes. um, I didn't really care for Catalina, to be honest with you. Uh, so I said, you know, I, I kind of took a chance, and and it was a chance that now I look back on that I would not not change for anything because yeah. I got a good education. Yeah, it's a private school, but I got a good education, and <laughs> Uh, I got to build something there that was very special. It was kind of like Micah Mountain was a few years ago where they just had a freshman uh, class, and then, you know, they played a JV schedule, added a sophomore class, and then thereafter junior yeah. and senior till they're a full high school now. But we took our lumps. You know, I mean, we, yeah. we, we got our tails kicked uh, the first two and a half years, and then my third year in, uh, in, in basketball, we finished fifth in the state. And then my senior year, we ended up taking it, so it was yeah. kind of nice. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Did you, did you did you play football? Did you play football in high school? I did. I you did. did. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And you ended up going to uh, University of John Brown University. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a stone's throw just over the Oklahoma border in Arkansas. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I think their claim to fame was they got a Tyson chicken plant there, and boy, I tell you, it smelled too. <laughs> it smelled. I could just imagine that, man. That's. Yeah. No. Um. And so, so how did you, how did you start? This? Like, what what made you want to do um, five tool sports talk and and get into you know this area of, of media? Well, that's a great what? question. Uh, it all started. Remember, you know, we've been in town for a long time. Tucson used to have two newspapers: the Daily Star in the morning and the Tucson Citizen at night. Yes. And the Daily Star, primarily, their focus is U of A men's basketball, uh, Arizona football. And then everybody, everything kind of takes a backseat to that. Yes. Where the uh, the citizen was more the high school. I remember racing my dad out to the driveway in the night, you know, to, to grab the paper to see how many points I had or touchdowns or, you know, yeah. hits in baseball or whatever the case was. They took care of a lot of high school sports. Um, at the time, Title IX was just starting, uh, the girls' sports. The girls sports. So they took care of that. Uh, and, and there really wasn't any club organizations back then. Um, I'm dating myself, but uh, they yeah. they took care of the everything but the U of A football and, and men's basketball team at the time. Yes, they went out of business in 2000 at the end of 2015, or it might have been January 2016, and it left a huge void in Tucson on sports coverage. Once again, the Star did what the Star did, and they didn't really they did they weren't real flexible. So there was a lot of uh, talent, a lot of you know teams and and great stories, great games that went really uncovered because of the fact that the citizen was gone. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know what, this is my this is my time and my place to give back to the people that helped me when I was an athlete. And let's try it, you know, and, and you know, if we fall on our face, we fall on our face. But I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, and back in 2000, we started ramping up like June of 2016. And then our first um, show was, uh, I think, September 9th of 2016. Uh, Julius Holt was my first guest yeah. on the show, so uh, the late Julius Holt, and uh, he was he was on there, and he's like, you know, watch out for these guys; they know what they're doing. Uh, Sean Scott was my was my co-host at the time. Yes. Uh, he was an invaluable asset, and we started out. I think we had our first show at uh, it's called High High Wire High something High Five yeah. High Five over at Grant and, or excuse me at, at uh, Orange Grove and. Uh, Thornydale and that Sam Levitt's shopping center. Oh, yes, show. yes, yes. Uh-huh. And then... Uh, Used we, to be a famous sounds. There you go. Yeah. There you yeah. go. And then uh, we kind of caught the eye of Andy Taylor uh, from K-Hit. And uh, Andy and I you know, became friends and, and we're still great friends. He's, he's probably one of the best, if not the best, in, in Tucson radio here. He works for K-Hit in the mornings. Uh, he's fabulous. So, I mean, definitely, yeah. if you're in your car, uh, turn to K-Hit. It's, it's, it's a great time with, with Andy and his partner. But... He had a studio. His daughter had gone to college, and he turned her bedroom into a studio, just like we have here. Yeah. Just state of the art equipment, and just fabulous. And he was, you know, the top notch producer, and you know, had us going in the right direction. And back then, uh, we just had like one or two guests on the show because it, we're, you know, we were we were inside. We weren't at a fire truck or frog at Firkin or something like that. Yeah. So, so uh, we started. That's how we started, and we kind of grew from there. And then as we got more popular, we're looking at the followers and the likes and stuff, and they were getting over a 1,000. It's like, you know, hey, let's let's try a live remote. And you and I have talked about this several times where, you yeah. know, our main focus is to acknowledge and promote Southern Arizona athletes yes. in the 520 area code and the 602 area code in Southern and Central Arizona. But we also wanted to 
uh, involve Tucson businesses. Yes. Uh, as sponsors, and you know how getting sponsors isn't the easiest thing. Yeah, yeah. It's... But if you, you know, kind of tell them, it's like, hey, you know, you're going to be known for also, you know, supporting youth football or youth sports or the Sugar Skulls or whatever you know you're going to cover. And so we started doing live remotes uh, out at different places. Frog and Firkin was one of the first one. Garrett Ratesman and I are still tremendous friends, and and uh, he's given me so much, you know, so much great advice. Yes. Over the years, that has just been invaluable. Uh, we used to have a uh, uh, Rincon Market before it got sold. We had them. We were at our Wings over Broadway before they closed, and then, uh, you know, and then COVID hit and everything went to hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I remember. I remember you. You had us at um, Golden Corral, mm -hmm. Dornydale. Uh, yeah, up in Morana. Yeah, up in Morana. Uh, we we're out there. You had you know had all these kids running around and sure. getting their grub on and stuff like that. And, I remember that. I mean, you talk about the the citizen and the and the and um, the Daily Star. I remember you can go into the newspaper. I'd be all excited because uh, down in the sports page, in the sports page, you'd have like a little box box area on the down with the box scores. Yeah, and you can actually see uh, youth football scores in the divisions and stuff like that. Even uh, like little league all stars, the right. baseball. You had the Bobby Sox, which was a softball then. You know they would they would have all the scores up there, so they they you know they had a little area and it kind of like faded away and there was no more, you know no more no more um, I guess how to say interest in in publicizing that stuff or just not enough manpower I guess to be able to get that stuff out there. But you know I guess with with um going into your going and seeing your shows like you're you're able to bring out you know I don't just see uh, youth football. Coming on your shows, I see, I see softball, I see um, um, cheer, we see um, at the uh, Sugar Dolls on yeah, the show the last week. Yeah, yeah, you have the Sugar Dolls, you have the seven on seven teams, you have the the what out? You, you have golf teams. You 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 cover like every sport and not stay stuck to them. And 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 um, that I, I I like that. I like to see that stuff right there. Um, what has been your favorite, your your one one of your most favorite um, interviews? Is your most funnest interviews that you've had on there? I mean, well, we've done almost five or I read around five hundred shows, so it's kind of hard yeah. to pick one out. One one's kind of sticks out, in, and uh, we also I wanted to to give a shout out to Pima College too because yeah. with the U of A in town, they're kind of you know the stepchild, or you know nobody really gives yeah. them a lot of uh, of media attention, and and we started doing that, and now all of a sudden. You know, the TV's doing it. Some of the media, the, the social media sports outlets are doing it now. They're covering yeah. people. We were the ones that started that to kind of put them on the map. But we had their women's uh, basketball team back on in 2016. Yeah. Uh, Todd Holdhouse was still the coach. And Sydney Stallworth, whose dad was actually on Todd's staff, yeah. uh, she was a great basketball player who came out of Palo Verde High School over on 22nd. Mm -hmm. And uh, she played for Pima for a couple of years, and then finished up her career uh, of all places in uh, Alaska Anchorage for the Sea Wolves. <laughs> but uh, she was an all she was an All American, a, a junior college All American, and and I asked her, I asked all the the players, but I asked her in particular, I was like, what's your what's your ritual before a game? You know, some people put the headphones on and they want to listen to music. Other people just want to read or meditate. Other people just want to talk and kind of get the butterflies out. Yeah. You know, what what's your what's your ritual pregame? She goes, she says, I poop and pray. <laughs> and, you know, that's a mic drop moment. It's like, I got nothing to come back with. That. So, You're like, and we'll be back with the next <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Like, it just stunned me. And, and like I said, we were relatively new, so we weren't yeah. polished like, you know, you know, like we are now. But, uh, yeah, that was one of the funniest moments. Uh, another one was a Redskin TYF kid. Yeah. And uh, you know how I ask the funny questions to kind of make it not like a job interview? And, yeah. And I was asking him, uh, you know, if there's a zombie apocalypse, you know, you can take two <laughs> people with you to help stay alive. Who do you got? And he's just like, well, my dad, because he hunts. I'm like, all right, that's a good choice. He goes, and my baby brother. And I'm like, your baby brother? He goes, yeah, he's, he's only like six months old. And I said, well, how is he going to help you stay alive? He goes, well, I'm going to feed him to the zombies. <laughs> Once you give them a head mic, start to yeah, go, right? <laughs> once again, a mic drop moment. But there, <laughs> there's been so many great questions and, and answers, you know, over yeah. the over the seven years that we've been doing this. It's just, uh, it's phenomenal. And, and I have as much fun as the kids do. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we see you now. Now, um, a lot of times I'll give you a call. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Like, you know, you know, just just, just to chop it up. And, um, like, uh, I got the Tucson Sugar Skulls or, 
I'm going out to um, to Phoenix. We're going to cover uh, uh, ASU game. We're going to cover something like that. Like how yeah, did, Grand Canyon? Yeah, for you a got while. GCU, you Grand Canyon. Yeah. They, and Grand Canyon was in the tournament this year, and they they played well. I well, mean, a couple of years ago, they were in. The, they were the only Arizona school in because remember uh, U of A had their self imposed penalty yes. trying to stay away from you know all the sanctions during the Sean Miller incident, but. And then ASU, which just wasn't good enough, to, and NAU wasn't good enough to make the, yeah. the dance. So uh, Grand Canyon played, they were a 14 seed, played three, number three, Iowa, and uh, took them down to, to the last couple of minutes. I think they lost by six or seven points. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, you know, so you, so um, how do you how how did that come about? Did they they give you a call and said, hey, you know, we're, we want you to come down here, and they they how do how do they how do you do it up there? Do they give you like a little press box or? How does that work out? Because you did even the – did you do the Rattlers also? Yeah, I do the Rattlers the, still. I do yeah, the Sugar Skulls and the Rattlers. Uh, as far as GCU is concerned, uh, Phoenix – and I think most people in southern Arizona realize this. Phoenix is a pro city. Yeah, It's not a college town like Tucson. Uh, ASU really has to fight to get the media coverage that they used to get, that yeah. they were usually you know used to getting before – you know, back in my day, the Phoenix Suns were the only team up there that was pro. Now you've got the Coyotes, you've got the Diamondbacks, you've got the Cardinals, you still have the Suns, and, and you even have the Phoenix Rising in the MISL. So yeah, uh, so you just have to make inward things. It's like, hey, I'd like to cover you. Uh, GCU, GCU laid out the red carpet for us. Uh, we were just right in the press box uh, with all the other uh, reporters, but there wasn't the, the amount of reporters that, say, ASU gets or yeah. – or, or, you know, obviously, you know, the, the, the pro teams. But uh, it, it's just all about making contacts and, and, and developing a relationship. Yeah. How do you feel being surrounded by some of those? Because I know they, they got, you know, um, ESPN covers a lot sure. of things. And um, um, how does it feel being, you know, in the same room with some of these guys? Uh, do you ever feel like, damn, or just like, forget Oh, no, them. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in awe. Yeah, because yeah. you know, I still consider mm-hmm. myself, you know, I'm a I'm – a, I'm a small fish, and, yeah. uh, you know, even though we've been doing it a long time, I'm not, you know, I'm not a household word, at least, you know, for what I know. But yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, guys, ex-athletes that turn into broadcasters and, and the ESPN guys, you know, I used to see Mike Tirico all the time. Yeah. Uh, my love, if I can back up just a little bit, my love for doing this actually is when I lived in San Diego in the 90s. Uh, I had a good gig. I, I hooked up with uh, a guy that was a subcontractor for ESPN and we did the holiday bowl from 93 to 2002. Wow. And uh, we got, to, I got to see the Arizona Nebraska game and that was great. Yeah, you know, yeah. ASG played in a couple of times, Kansas state was there, Washington. And it used to be a pac 12, uh, big 12 matchup. Yeah. So, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that, I've seen a holiday, lot of quite a, yeah, the holiday bowls, it's a big bowl. It is. It's, it's one of the most exciting bowls. Yeah. Too. It's what the second place. Is it the second place Pac-12 team mm-hmm. that goes? Well, it's, I think they alternate with the Alamo bowl. With the Alamo bowl. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. And we all know what happened to Oregon in the <laughs> Alamo bowl. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that didn't work out too well. Right. Um, that was one of my other questions. Um, I've, de- I, I've been, I've seen a couple of shows and and I've seen like people in the background and stuff. Um, um, do you, you take interns on? Yeah, like, we have an intern program uh, right now. I've got somebody that just got out of Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, which is up at ASU. Yeah, and actually, that's one of the top three broadcasting and journalism schools in the country. Syracuse has wow. a real good one, and I can't recall what the other one was, but it, it's you know they're they're top notch. Obviously, if Walter Cronkite is going to put their name on it. Then, you know, yeah. They're going to spend a lot of money. So I've got that. Uh, I've had interns over the year. I've still got one uh, that actually he went with me yesterday to Phoenix, and uh, he's a graduate of Benson High School. So right. he, um, you know, he's doing a good job. He, he doesn't really want to do the writing journalism. He wants to do more of the media journalism. So yeah. we're kind of taking him step by step into that and kind of throwing him a bone now and then. And, and, and yeah. you know, he helped me a lot with football, uh, you know, when Chris wasn't available or somebody like that. So. Yeah, yeah, because I know we uh, we're talking right now, uh, uh, us three back in the background right there. We got Chris back there, the engineer. Oh, Chris is fantastic. <laughs> I, I I can't say it enough about Chris. Yeah. He's great. We also have a go yeah. ahead and try. <laughs> 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 we got a uh, Ramon de la Osa on Mountain View. That's my dog. Use, uh, yeah, send you a little shout out there with the uh, Mountain View softball. Fabulous coach. Yeah. Met him when he was. It's kind of funny. I met him when he was at Rio Rico. Yeah, and. Uh, and then he went to Mountain View. And then I found out that uh, my uncle told me, he's just like, my wife is a De La Osa. 
Yeah. And so I guess that's Ramon's cousin. So <laughs> by a marriage, you know, it, we're kind of related in, 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 the, in that way. But uh, Ramon's tremendous. Uh, I got the opportunity to do a, a softball game a few weeks back against Sunnyside. Yeah. And, boy, I tell you, that was a really good game. I mean, Sunnyside had a 10-run inning, and, and Mountain View just didn't quit. And, you know, yeah. they, had a couple, they had a couple people on the bottom of the seventh, and they were one batter away from setting the tying run to the plate. Yeah. And, uh, you know, had Sunnyside had not that big inning – Mountain View outscored him seven to one the rest of the way. So it, it was a lot of fun. We do a lot. I think softball is what put us on the map. We did a lot of softball early on. Yeah, yeah. And then now coming in with the with the high school football, and I I, I know Chris will probably chime in on this one. How do you feel about the way they the, the new alignment the new alignment of all the the conferences that are coming in with the football this year? I think this the is the best school. they've been so far, at least in the last few years. It, it you can't really get comfortable because. Uh, check me if I'm wrong, Chris, but don't they change it every two years or they, 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 they take a look at it? Actually, since the Open 8 came out into play, I think what they've been doing is actually they change it every year. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. So at least the teams I know are actually moving up and moving down every single year. Uh, so you don't have those, uh, like, like they used to set everything up in two years. So you'd play the same roster here and there, kind of kind of trade off. Uh, they used to do that. They don't do that anymore. They're doing actually a lot more realignments now that the open eight's been put into play. Um, and also the other thing that is going on is you see a lot of these teams kind of moving up divisions or moving down mm -hmm. accordingly to how not necessarily the enrollment of the school, but how their, their, their track records have been over a period of three years or stuff like that. So it's been kind of interesting to see that aspect of it all. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a good, bad thing. I don't think you're going to ever make anybody happy, you know, totally 100%. Uh, I remember a couple of years back, and I think Chris remembers this too, is uh, they moved Empire up to 5A because at that point they were doing student enrollment. So Empire yeah. had to take on Andrada, which is a technical school, high school. They had to take on their, their numbers as far as student body, yeah. and that put them up from 3A to 5A. And they got killed in football. They got killed in basketball. The only thing that that move upwards didn't affect was girls softball because Empire is a, is a traditionally very strong school. They've got a couple of state championships. Yeah. And you know in the summer when they play club ball, I mean, 3A is playing with 4A, 5A, 6A. They all play together. They're so. all mixed in, yeah. Yeah, so that really didn't affect them. But but the boys' side of the of the you know team, when they moved from 3A to 5A, they just it was terrible because they just were not competitive. And luckily they were smart enough to move them back down. Yeah. Which actually, um, I believe – they had to do what was it a three year, mm -hmm. three year punishment or it was two or three years, which is funny because they got rid of Andrada the very next year. Yeah, they didn't allow those those athletes to go anymore. So, which is funny because people don't understand that Andrada is like an eight hundred some odd people enrollment. Yeah, it's it's, it's, yeah. Not, it's a really huge, good size school, but it's yeah, it's, it's um, more than Santa Rita. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, throw Sabino yeah. in there too. I mean, a yeah. lot of a lot of people don't understand how large the school is. Um, so, I mean. Then when they got rid of it, I think it was really difficult for them as well because what happened was is that now you moved up to 5A. They had the two years punishment. But the thing is you can't move back down to 3A. You have to drop to 4A, and then you got to drop to 3A that way. But I don't even think right now, which they could finally move down to 3A now. I think this was the first year they could have dropped down to 3A. But it's almost like not in their favor to drop down to 3A with the 3A regions that we have. True, the three A's are, is tough, and and Sabino obviously is yeah. head and shoulders Push above Ridge, anybody. Thatcher, in, Thatcher, yeah. Safford, yeah. now no yeah. yeah, Thatcher, yeah. they they got some hosses yeah, over there, do. and they yeah, they, they make no no bones about it. We're gonna run the ball. Oh yeah, We're gonna run it was kind of neat going to Palo Verde Christian at the time because we yeah. we didn't have any home other than our home games. We had to travel out of the city. Yeah. you know, we went to Benson, we went to Sawanita, we went to. Uh, Valley Union, which is in Elfrida. We did St. Saint David. We did Pima, uh, Fort Thomas. Uh, we even went up to St. John's up in the White Mountains. But the kids that go to 3, 4, and 5, 8, or not so much 3, but 4, 5, and 6, 8 schools, they don't get to uh, experience those out-of-town games back when I was playing. Now, Tucson yeah. goes to Phoenix, and you're going from one big city to another big city. But, uh, you know, I remember our first time that we went to uh, St. David. Uh, we pull up in our bus, and... There's nothing to do in St. David, so everybody's at a Friday night game. There's pickup trucks literally at the back <laughs> of the end zone. Their tailgates are down. 
guys out of the cowboy hats chewing on a toothpick looking after you. You're looking in the window at a gun rack in, in the back <laughs> of the pickup. And, and you're, you know, you're 16, 17 years old, and you're yeah. just, you know, you're, you're totally, you know, it was very, very, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, we scared the crap out of us. You're, you're like, um, let's score on the in the other end zone, <laughs> exactly. away from those gun racks. Let's lose, yeah. the, lose the toss so we can pick end zones. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that's great tradition. Those um that 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 style of, of, of football going into small towns, the tradition and, and and we've gone away from a lot of a lot of traditions mm-hmm. like that. I know some of the Fridays you have the uh, the big pep rallies, big sure. pep rallies going into the game and stuff like that. But it's something something to come back to, you know what I mean? Yeah, they I, have I mean, they've lost that kind of fan participation or student participation uh, yeah. the last few years. Yeah. So but it, it's pretty cool. We went. I went on Friday. Friday, I was in um, at the U of A. At the U of A, they had a, a coaching coaching clinic. A coaching mm-hmm. clinic. Was a coaching. Uh, uh, coach like a pro. It's called hosted by uh, Brandon Sanders. Organized the whole thing. Brandon does a yeah. fabulous job. Brandon is is really knocking that stuff out of the ballpark. Um, and uh, he he takes a lot of pride in what he does, and he he puts all his heart into it. And it was it was such a it was a great turnout. And we we were you know I was sitting next to the Thatcher co head coach, and you know you see you see a bunch of other head coaches all, all over from the state. And there was also one from New Mexico. I think it was a Rio Rancho, mm. Rio Rancho High School. They were they were there, and it it was it was great. I mean you had a Brian Billick there. Yeah, you had a Brian Billick. You had a Mike. Um, Mike Smith. Mike Smith was there for I the Falcons. I heard Pete Carroll drop by. Pete Carroll dropped by yeah. Saturday, yeah. Was, which was yesterday. He dropped by, and he was um, at the practice, and he spoke with everyone there. But um, his, his son is an O-line coach for for the U of A. Okay. So so he, he was there, and uh, I got to sit in a, um, a meeting room with them, and those meeting rooms are awesome. I don't know how these guys miss any meetings. Right. They better not miss. It's comfortable in there. It is. But, it's like a lounge. Uh, yeah, man. You know, so – it it was it was kind of cool to be in there and around these guys and stuff like that I, and uh, not just see we we usually see the coaches on the sidelines right you know running the sidelines and then they gave us a lot of background it was more of a leadership you know what he said a leadership clinic than than anything that's what I took from it but yeah it's pretty cool to do that so. But, um, you know, Brandon's is a San Diego guy, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a six one nine er, right? <laughs> he's a six one nine er out of Helix High School. We had that Helix pipeline yeah. for a long time. Alan yeah. Durden started it, and you had yeah. Brandon, you had Jeff Hammerschmidt, you had uh, uh, there's a couple other ones that, are, that their names are, are not coming back to me. But uh, yeah, yeah, we had that Helix pipeline for a while. Yeah, I know he's he's doing a hell of a job over there right now. But um, what are my other questions? That, what I want to ask you: What was your most memorable, your most memorable interview that you've had? Like one that you just like, wow, you know, you know, this is this is this is cool, you know. Uh, that's easy, Dick Tomey. Dick Tomey. Dick Tomey. I love, yeah. just love Dick. Uh, he was actually on my show twice when uh, F- when Pima College still had football when there was JC football in in the state. Uh, he was helping out Coach Jim Monaco, who's now the AD at. at Pima, yeah, uh, and we had them at uh, Stray Dogs, yes, at Stone and River. That was a great, uh, that was a great show place. But then they ended up selling the building, and <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's a dispensary now. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, that was yeah. That by far, Dick Tomey was was the highlight of, of my five two zero shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are what are what are the, some of the things that that you got coming down the road, or something, or something that you want to see? Being that you've seen all, a lot of the Tucson sports, whether it's youth, high school, or stuff like that, like what is something that you would like to see Southern Arizona sports or all Arizona sports get better at? Like, well, I, I think I had a conversation with Chris on this. Uh, the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame asked us to be a part of uh, the things that they do, whether it's a, a banquet or at the end of February they had a combine outside of State Farm Stadium. Yeah. Uh, two weeks after the Super Bowl. And uh, we promoted it, started promoting it in late December, January, really pushing it. And what it was, the guys that didn't sign D1 letters, and, and let's face it, there's not a lot of Tucson or Southern Arizona kids that are going to sign D1 letters, but D2 was there, D3 was there, and NAIA was there. And they brought fat, fat checkbooks with them. 
Yeah. And uh, we it was for the whole state, but it was our responsibility and our agreement with the National Football Foundation to to public you know to promote this. And so you know, I called high school coaches. They called high school coaches and athletic directors, and and they got quite a few people signing up. And then I went up there the day of the combine, and hardly any Southern Arizona kids were there. And yeah. I was very very disappointed in that. I, I think I mentioned it to Chris, and. You know, if Southern Arizona is going to get on the map and, and not totally be overshadowed by Phoenix, you know, the kids have to, at the end of the day, they have to take some type of step to make sure that they're doing it. After the fact, when I came back, I, I recalled the schools. I'm like, hey, you know, you had six guys or seven guys signed up. Where were they? They were no-shows. Well, you know, it was rodeo week. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know. That, that's got to change. Yeah, that's yeah. got to. It's like your future's involved here, and you're worried about rodeo week, you know. Yeah, and and it was just disappointing. And, and I know Chris worked hard and and tirelessly on on the same type of subjects that trying to get you know trying one, to get Southern one, Arizona promoted. Yeah. One one thing that not to, not to interrupt. One of the things that was funny because like I was just talking to Rodney just recently, and like we were talking about how Javier Morales, just to use this for example. We went on to his page and we saw how many kids had committed uh, from the Southern Arizona area. And there was 31. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Rodney had over half of them, but that, but that's a whole different story. So like, we're, we're looking at 31 kids and, and like, we're like, wow, that's pretty good. And I said, Rodney, I said, there's 25 high schools just in the Tucson area sure. alone. So how good is that really? Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's, that's actually the, the shame of what it is, is that it's like, how is it that we can be so proud of like our community and these kids moving on and playing at the next level when we literally just show just in this year now mine mine there still might be more kids to come but like we literally right now have maybe one per school maybe one and a quarter if you want to look at it in those mm -hmm. kind of numbers mm -hmm. because three of those kids were from one of them was from salmon well mm -hmm. one was from nogales and another one, I think, was from um, uh, Douglas or something like that. I don't know if they've gotten all the kids that have committed or whatnot, but it's like these kind of numbers can't happen. Like exactly, and and, and then they, you know, they wonder why. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Two years ago, I was at ASU Stadium in the uh, press box when they that when they were holding the state championship games there. Yeah, and I got there about midway through the Casa Grande game, and they had Angel Flores. Chris remembers him. Uh, just a terrific quarterback. I believe he yeah. plays for NAU now. Yeah, amazing uh, but, kid. But they were, uh, you know, he was just a great quarterback, one of the best uh, Southern Arizona quarterbacks in that particular year. And they were just, you know, the scouts and the coaches up in the press box were just going off, just like, oh, this kid's got a lot of potential. And I just kind of chimed in. I said, you know, do you ever make your way down to Tucson or Southern Arizona? And their answer just floored me. They said, no, unless they work, unless they go to South Point, we don't even bother going down there. Yeah, that's the thing that Chris is trying to change. That's what it's, I'm trying to it's change. Crazy I'm, man. Yeah. I'm sure Javier and some of the other people are probably you know trying to change that because there's a difference, and you know this coaching football. There's a difference yeah. between Tucson good and being good. Yeah, you know, yeah. On, on a state or national level. Yeah, you got to get out there. You got to get out there and play the best. You know, get out of your your little circle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, also, also even even with, even with that, I think the the way the alignment is, there's going to be more uh, more. Um, more Tucson games, more um, where you got more uh, rivalries going, old rivalries coming back up. And I think those should start filling up the stands and creating a lot more buzz and, I don't know, make a little bit more excitement, a little hands bit more down. excitement this hands year. So. I think hands down yeah. it's going to be such a better season yeah. because you oh, are going to have, you're going to have even those teams that we would probably snarl at, like, oh, my God, I don't want to even talk about this team. Like, they're playing each other now, which makes – just such a better atmosphere yeah. that you're going to hopefully see some of these kids coming back out to the fields, schools revenueing more money. I mean, it's unfortunately that South Point won't be a part of like of the revenue. Like South Point's in a situation like Tucson High was just a couple of years ago, where it's like they're not revenueing the money from playing some of these local schools, these local teams. So they're not going to get that that gate money. I mean, you got what one school, Marana. This was the first game of their year. Yeah. on the new schedule and the rest of it's Phoenix. Like mm -hmm. honestly, none of us are going to care. And like, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Yeah. None of us are going to care who they're playing. Maybe the Liberty Scottsdale Saguaro, maybe these names that pop out to us, but like 
we don't know those teams. They they don't they don't hold weight for the typical person in Tucson. Like you don't have that. Like the a couple of years ago, where where we, I got a burger out of you, it's, <laughs> it's like where we sat down and yeah. it was like, hey, look, you know, South Point's playing in Desert View. Mm -hmm. That that's everybody was there that day. It was they were packed. packed yeah, packed you know, house. I mean, when when South Point plays Sienega or when South Point plays pretty much any school. It draws such a huge crowd to our community that it's really going to hurt not to have those those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the games, like you, you have these these big big rivals. You got the Sabino Saguaro rivalry. You sure. got Sunnyside Desert View rivalry. Or even Sunnyside you, you know, Pueblo. Yeah, you got those Sunnyside are two older Pueblo, schools. You got yeah, yeah. You, it, it, and and um, those create you know big, great atmospheres. You know, yeah, and totally. and. Uh, it, it's it's that's what you want to do and i'm a big believer if if you you have to be you have to take we have to take care of tucson first sure if we take tucson first and get better as as tucson and not be so separated and selfish in some ways and and stop messing around like like this can tucson tucson sports could be a lot better and maybe we don't have to rely so much on the on the phoenix situation but um I I I'm, I totally believe you with that because nobody comes down here. They won't cut, like some yeah. you, some of those the the. We I mean, got a million they, people here, and there's got to be you know, like yeah. I've said so many times on my show, the Phoenix kids are not better than the Tucson athletes. The cream of the crop and the cream of the crop. Yeah, it's just there's more of them because you got a you know three or four million person city, and you've got a million here in Pima County. Well, so, well yeah. and I, I've also heard when you start talking about like divisions like Division threes or NAIs that that look and. Actually, even Division Twos, which they're going to base a lot of their their financial support from academics. But one of the things that hurts Southern Arizona is we don't hold our, our athletes to the standard of of a high GPA. Yeah, we we allow them to have you know it's okay. We you can play. Yeah, you can run you a can four three forty. So we'll you, let you get. Seasons. You got a two. Yeah, you, you got a two point oh. Yeah. You're you're okay. You can still play. You train every day. You can still play. Don't worry about your grades. Right. Right. And the yeah. thing is, is that what's really hurting a lot of Southern Arizona is like you'll have schools like that that typically look at a school for the GPAs to see what kids are eligible. Yeah. And what happens is they're going like, you want me to drive down to Tucson for three kids in the whole program that are eligible? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why am I going to do that? I can get – there's only three kids on this roster that aren't eligible up in Phoenix because they hold them at different standards. Yeah, they and, do. They and do. that's one of the biggest problems yeah. that, that's hurting – I mean, Tucson. Well, you, and you look now, there's not going to be too many uh, too many uh, um, Division I uh, offers, uh, full ride offers right. or whatnot. Now with the NIL, all that stuff has changed. All that stuff has changed, and now we, it's now detrimental you, yeah. to actually the, the seniors going into college. Oh, with You're, the portal yeah. and everything yeah. else. Yes, with the Absolutely. transfer, the transfer portal in the NIL has changed everything now, to where Chris Chris has talked about it. I mean. The, he gets credit on this one. He's talked about it as the preferred walk-ons. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to see now. And, and, and like Chris long. says, it's a, it's like running into a car lot and yeah. test driving a Ferrari. Schools for a are going to test drive these kids now. Yeah. Right. Because first of all, we already know this happens a lot with our, our kids in our community too, was that they'll go to a school and they'll like, yo mom, I really miss your, your, you're you're in a carne asada. I need to come back home, or or I miss like it's just I, I miss the carne asada I'm, I'm, I'm right only, now. <laughs> hey, I'm only saying the carne asada because that one game, right? Yeah. Um, right. So yeah. So like like I'm saying is they get homesick, and next thing you know, they want to come back, and that's typically within the first year. So what these schools are now doing is like, you know what? I'll give you a PWO. Feel free to come. You're gonna pay. Academically, can you hang? And also physically, can you hang with our program? And are you going to want to stick around? Because a lot of these kids are just going to sit up and just go, you know what? I'm out. Sure. I'm yeah. going to go home. I can't I can't do it. So now they're not even out of debt. They, I mean, they, they, they took no money to pay for this kid. These yeah. kids come out. They realize that it's no joke. And they come back home. And the thing is, is that there's not even too many options. If you really think about this, there's really not many options around like Arizona and the even the states that surround us. Yeah. There's very limited opportunities. So and even less yeah. now that JUCO football's gone. Oh, I, yeah. I, honestly, worst thing that ever happened to Arizona is is the JUCO program is closing down. Agreed. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that they're trying to do the whole Hokum thing. Really, not a big fan of it. Um, uh, but like, my whole thing is this: is like. 
guys, we had one of the best JUCO programs in the country. Yeah, yeah Pima went to Texas uh, on a bowl game. Western, and- Western, yeah. Western Arizona was was a monster. Oh, I yeah. mean, like Eastern Arizona Eastern, monsters, yeah. like some like some Pima monsters. Yeah. They all did really well. And the and the thing is, is like they'll say insurance or whatever the heck they said that canceled all this stuff. But it's like, come on, really? Yeah. Then then charge more. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know, cost more okay cool let's bring it back i mean seriously like monaco and all these other guys really need to sit down and go hey look we need to bring it back because that was a gateway for several athletes in southern arizona to move yeah. forward to a, a any kind of four four-year college so exactly. it's, it's really missed it is seriously well, well you yeah. know going on what chris said and i've said this many many times on my show those of you who followed us for for the last seven years and, and me included, I would not have been able to go to college had I not got a scholarship. My parents yeah. couldn't afford it. You know, and there's a lot of kids down here in southern Arizona, not just Tucson, but southern Arizona, that they need a scholarship or they're not or they're gonna not go to college and they're gonna end up, you know, just trying to get a job and yeah. and, and that's a lost opportunity. That's one of the things that, that Chris and I and some of the other media people are trying to work on. And that was the big thing with that uh, National Football Foundation. We're yeah. we're opening the door. We're paving you the, the golden walk for you. All you got to do is show up. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of give you a, a, a little side fact on this, there was eight kickers that went to that combine in, at State Farm Stadium. Six of them got scholarships, and a couple of them got multiple scholarships. There was wow. there was so many schools from the Midwest that you haven't heard of, but. You know, you're still getting a chance to play the game you love. You're still getting a free education, or at least a partially free Partial, education. Yeah. But they they gave. I was just talking to uh, Lisa Mandel, who's one of the big wigs at National Football Foundation. She said over three million dollars was spent at that combine on scholarship offers. That's incredible. Wow. They just brought fat page, yeah, fat checkbooks, and they're like, here, 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 and yeah. you know, and and the Southern Arizona kids. I was like, you don't show up, you can't say oh i missed that opportunity you know do you want a what if all your life you know you gotta you yeah. gotta make a determination on what's important for you and that's what that's where i got kind of uh you know discouraged yeah it's like a, a lot of these kids i kind of took a oh michigan wasn't there you know usc wasn't there stuff like that that's what that's what they look and that's what they buy into or they they don't want it all but a lot of these guys also were were, were just skating through their academics they're skating through, and I I know that for they they were asking for a certain GPA mm-hmm. to go to that thing. They did, they were, but it wasn't they, hard. I think it was a three three two. It was a three two, yeah. and that's the minimum. That's the one that that I I always press here. I know Chris presses that on, on his on his so easy, and and um you know about these kids getting their GPA up, GPA up, and I and and I mean I hate to say it, but I'm gonna say it because uh, we speak the truth here. It's it's uh, I think a lot of kids were discouraged, and they kind of like hit, stayed back because of their GPA. You know, I think that, that I think being is seeing what I've seen these past few years. These kids got to step up their game mm-hmm. on their GPA and stop blaming you know all this other stuff. You know, like they can be great athletes, they can be really good, but they're not. They're not, you know, and the parents are, yeah, my son's this and videotaping this and putting this film up and putting this film up, but but and spending money going to this trainer, to this trainer, to this trainer. But but sometimes to me, I'm like, well, where are you spending money with a tutor? Right. You know, right. like that's the main thing. And, and that makes it easier because you're four, four, you're four, five, 40. Compared to the other guys, four six forty that can do the same exact thing that you can and make straight A's. But his GPA <laughs> is a four I yeah. mean, I'm gonna take you because I'm gonna take the four point oh because of this this because they're 3. not gonna have to pay ain't for working. It. Exactly, because right. the college coach is gonna yeah. sit there and go, I can save money. Mm-hmm. Yep. If I go with the smart kid, that, that's and that's what's what's seriously happening. Yeah. And we hold no accountability on our kids. And the other thing is, is that we also need to start holding accountability on our communities as well. Yeah. Because the one thing like this, my kid was a 2021 kid, COVID season. Yeah. We were the only county in the state that didn't really do football. Mm-hmm. Like, how disgusting is that? Yeah. I mean, our, our community, we're turning our backs where other communities will fight for. 
You know, they'll fight for like, hey, look, we're not stopping this. I guarantee you, you go up to Scottsdale Saguaro, they were not stopping. Chandler, Hamilton, Hamilton nope, same thing. None of them. Yeah. Uh-uh, we're playing football. Why? Because they're invested in it as a business. It is a business, and we need to stop sitting here going like, you know what, we're okay with, with like, charity play. Yeah. It is a, like, football is the number one breadwinner for a school outside of, like, you know, the government funding. Yeah. Hands down. Like, yep. it's a business. Stop bullshitting. Yep. I mean, hats off to the Sunnyside School District for doing the upgrades to their fields. Yeah. To, but you look at it like this way, TUSD, the second largest school district in the state, right? Yeah. They're the only school district I know of that doesn't have press boxes. Right. How the hell does this happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is disgusting. Yeah, and, and only one school, and check me if I'm wrong, but only one school with turf, and that's Tucson that's High. Is Tucson that correct? Well, there's two schools with actually the press boxes, which is Sabino and also Rincon. Right. But, yeah. yes, there's only one with turf. Mm-hmm. But, like, everybody else is like, like, hey, look, we we got to upgrade our facilities, pull these kids out, get into the same. I can go all day on this topic, man. Like, trust me, I have. Like, it, it's just sad, you know? Yeah. No, I, I agree with you, Chris, and, and this might uh, I might ruffle some feathers with this comment, but uh, like you said, we speak the truth here. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it has to fall on the school districts. Yeah, uh, you know, Sabino overall for for boys and girls sports is the shining star for for TUSD. Yes, uh, you know, in football they are uh, their their softball team has won four state championships in a row. Uh, they're always good in basketball and and just some of the other sports, but I don't see the the effort. That TUS, you know, the TUSD doesn't put into it that you know your Vail school districts do, uh, Sawadita, Morana, Sawadita, uh, and even to a lesser extent the Amphi school district. Although Amphi is the is the anchor school, uh, and then you've got CDO and Ironwood, yeah. but uh, it, it you know it just it, it just just discouraging. You know, it's yeah. like these are our future. These kids need to have some help. Yeah. That's what you're here for. And they just kind of turn a blind eye to it. I, you know, I mean, hats off to, you know, some of the charter schools, you know, the Lehman Academies and the and math and science, but yeah. they don't have full-fledged athletic programs. You know, they're good on the academic side, but they, you know, they just don't have the funding to, to you know, to do a football well, team well, or something you, like well, that. you see yeah. that same impact with, like, the gyms, like the weight rooms. Yes. Like, that's becoming the new, hey, minimum. You better beef that up. You know what I'm saying? You see schools such as like Pueblo that stepped it up and has a new weight room that's nice. Yes, uh, you see. And I like, think that's because of Brandon. Yeah, I really but do. It was Brandon and and, and, and Jake. Yeah, Jake, both Coach Jake, man. Yeah. He, they both he, did a collab on that. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. you know, picked up and handed off the baton, and and then they did a really great job of that. Um, which I know it's hard to pull strings with that district, but like you see things, it's like okay, cool. Like you can see. Like there's there's finally a recognition. It's like, hey, look, we need to we need to catch up. You know what I mean, like you look at Buena right now, one of the largest jumbotrons, and nobody even knew that there was already two here. Like I laugh yeah. at people because they didn't even know that like Desert View and Sunnyside had one. Yeah, they're well, like, wait, they have a jumbotron. I was like, yeah, they just never turn it on. I don't care. Buena's cold as hell. They need to get a dome. <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. Buena <laughs> has always been a tough road trip for yeah. Tucson schools, even oh, back in my day. Gosh. You know. Oh, last year was something I, I shook uncontrollably. Oh, man. I, I was inside Culver's, and God bless the, <laughs> the young lady that works in there. She's seen me just shaking. She came and brought me a hot tea. Oh, man. She's, I think she saved my life. Yeah, she, she, I, I, yeah, it was bad. It was bad, but. Yeah, Buena needs to get a dome. Exactly, <laughs> they need to get a dome. But I mean, I mean, we see this in football. We, um, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure it happens in softball, basketball, all, all these programs. I think it just, it just stem. I, I just think it stems from, from the academic thing and, um, and, and just certain situations like that. And also, you know, TSD and and a lot of the school districts don't support the. The youth programs, not at all. You know, you all. you know. I know, I know. We we you know, myself and my brother. We we've, you know, um, we we've, we've kind of like gone to battle like to try to get football fields and get football fields here in in Tucson, um, for so the youth can be able to use them. But then I you know I, I sit back and I say, 
There are a lot of football fields here in Tucson. Or multi-purpose yeah. fields up yes. here in soccer, like at Keno. Yeah, yeah. Soccer is just yeah. over. They they they've got schools dedicated, like like the schools they take part of their their the school grounds away and put lights up and soccer fields and they use them for you know club balls. You, you want to know you where know? my home games were at Palo Verde Christian back in the late seventies? Where's that? Fort Lowell Park. Oh god, Lowell yeah, Park. right there. So we didn't have There's an on campus you know yeah, football field out there on Craycroft. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know you still got you know is it the Falcons are out there mm-hmm. the youth football, but you know it, it's um. It's interesting the way things are now, you know what I mean? But Well, um, going by what you yeah. said, going off what you said, it was a great point was, yeah. you know, people ask me, is this like, you know, well, you know, why don't you concentrate? You concentrate on a lot of youth sports. And yes, we do. Yeah. Because we're trying to get them prepared for high school. You know, it starts with Little League. It starts with TYF, AYF. It starts with, the, you know, the soccer teams. And, you know, and yeah, we want these middle schoolers and, and even some of the fifth and sixth graders Let's get them prepared to what they're going to expect. Yes. You know, and, and you know, yeah, you're not going to talk about hardcore recruiting with a with a middle schooler, but then again, with the way that we have in the social media, you know, going on, and you have to tell them you have to be responsible for your social media. You can't put yeah. crazy stuff on IG or TikTok or Facebook or not that the kids are on Facebook. I always get yeah, told yeah, that that's right. for old people, but <laughs> but you know, you have to kind of prep them. To get ready for it, and and the, I like doing little league and, and AYF and TYF and, and some of the youth sports just because of the fact that they will listen, you know. And then yeah. David Adams has been a longtime co-host. I've had Jerry Beasley, John Kaiser is a contributor to you know Jay Dobbins has been with me, I, and it's just it, you know, you want to prep these kids so it's not a culture shock or an academic or athletic shock once they they go from eighth grade to ninth grade because. You remember what the big jump was. That's a big jump, yep. you know, mature-wise and athletic-wise. I mean, most of your junior highs or, or middle schools, as they call them, don't really have really good, uh, at least in the city, they don't have really good athletic programs. I know Vail does yep. uh, with Esmond Station and, and, and Old Vail Middle School and some of that. But, you know, it's, it's a shock. And, and you got to look at that, that age group. I mean, they're, you know, they're... They're all screwed up anyways because yeah. they're going through puberty and they don't know up from down and yeah, you know, and, and it's a hard time for them to be finding a kid. themselves exactly you know? So, and you know, yeah. and so that's where we want to concentrate to kind of prep them for that. Yes, I love doing high school. Yes, I love doing the sugar skulls and and some of the universities and stuff. But I want to try to make my mark or our mark, I should say, uh, getting kids ready and, and letting them know what's expected of them. And, and like you said, yeah. and like Chris said, you know, first and foremost is, is academics. You're, you're a student athlete. You're not an athlete student. Yeah. And I, and you know, one of the things that's getting thrown out and I'm, I'm probably going to piss some people off with this one, my brother, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, you know, it is how, how, how do you guys feel? And this is for you too, Chris. How, how do you guys feel about this uh, thing going around now as into, um, what do you call it, um, reclassifying? I'm starting to hear that out in the youth sport area. I'm not uh, familiar uh, with that. Re- reclassifying means they're, they're holding the kid back a year okay. to not put them into high school yet. Is that they, for a maturity level type thing or is it bad academics? They're... they're some of the kids that we see have good academics. I don't, I don't, I, and I don't know. I don't know why you would want to do it. That's my question. I mean, the maturity level. I mean, is is that to me? I kind of see it as um, you're you're now putting athlete before student, you know. And it's like, well, if the kid's pretty good now, he don't come off the field, and he's balling out as an eighth grader. Why why would you keep him back? You, you know what I'm saying? Now, whose decision it's, is that? It's, it, is that a school board? Most of the time, it's a parent. It's a parent. It's, a parent? It's, okay. it's the parent, and 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 I feel sometimes it's it's brought on by the youth coach trying to to to, to keep the kid back, you know, to get another get a little championship. I think it's you know, I think it's kind of having like a that. ringer. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah. think I think it's a trend kind of going on due to bigger markets such as California, Florida, Texas, mm-hmm. stuff like that would that would normally do it to allow their kids to develop and have a better opportunity, for instance, to go off and play at maybe a higher level or competition level or whatnot. Um, I don't think, and I've said this a thousand times, we're not the market to do it. Yeah. 
I mean, if you're going to do it and you're sitting in, in Tucson, you're like, if, if this is really something you want to do is, is reclassify your kid, move to Phoenix. It's enough embarrassment. And, and take it from me as a kid who actually got held back. Yeah. It, it's enough embarrassment, you know, to do school, something that you probably don't like in the first place. Sure. Yeah. You know, being held back or whatnot. I mean, you can be at, at, at a certain level with, I think, your parents. And you can have these conversations and whatnot. But is it really for the kid or is it more or less because, you know, I, I, I just, I just don't think unless you, you're, if, it, Chris, if you got, it, if you got large <laughs> parents, like if you're, if you're big parents and your kids and so on and so on, you know, need to develop or something like that, you can't predict what's going to happen in high school. And the thing is, is you're holding the back your kid in hopes that this changes the outcome. If your kid is successful in school, allow him to evolve and get going towards his life as a career. Like if if yep. he if you're sitting there and go, okay, cool. Like it, it, to me, it's just like you're holding something back, and la- and we're not the market to do it. So if you're going to move, God bless you. I will go. You know, hey, look, I I, I helped your flight. I'll drive you to the airport. Yeah. You know, fly out to California, fly out to those markets where it matters. I will applaud you because that's what you felt you need to do. But if you're not, then what are we really doing it for? Because Tucson, like we just said, like we ain't even got GPAs. We we don't have yeah. anything else. Like we are literally wasting these kids' time. Just to, just go. You know what I'm saying? Just go. Like. Yeah. Or let your kid evolve and move on. We're not all going to play for Dallas or, or the Raiders or yeah. whatever the freaking team you think your kid's going to go play for. Hell, 99 point whatever. Like, like I say this all the time. The reason why only 6% kids make it to high school, I mean make it to college from high school, is because 94 of us, 94% of us are idiots. We don't know what the hell we're doing. Because there could be, you're going to tell me that college is out there that you're going to pay to play because that's the bulk of it. You're going to pay to play. They're not going to make another college for you or accept you. Hell, there's 40 wide receivers currently sitting probably at Ottawa and ACU right now. Mm-hmm. Like, go look at the rosters. Like, you can go find a place. Like, I'm not saying this in a negative way. You can go find a place. But you're going to hold your kid back for what? Yeah. Like, <sighs> And 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 you, you can't talk it's to totally these people. It's totally frustrating. Yeah, it's something that it, you can't it, talk bothers, to these it, people. it bothers me a lot because like I I I've had kids, you know, they're 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 in this was like what two years ago. Um we played and and uh you know um they were like, Hey coach, we're gonna we're gonna come back next year. We, we, I said, No, you're not. You're you're going to high school. Get the hell out of here. Go to high school. Go get go go kick ass in your education. I go and have fun playing. I said, don't don't run away from the work. Don't right. run away from right. the work because if if you're small, work harder. If you're big, work harder. It don't change. You gotta work harder for what you want to do. So I said, I don't want to see you guys back here. And right now, those those two kids, it's it's, it's not because of me. It's because of their hard work. Those kids are in varsity already. One was in varsity as a sophomore. Well, and at, it, at, it, at a, that's at a, a, that's a, a whole. A very, but, but I'm saying that's a whole other conversation no, we could have no, too. Yeah, but I'm saying they they were they they were they were kind of being influenced a little bit no, with you. with the reclassing. It's like no, well, we, and, like, and, and here's bye. here's here's a fine here's a fine example. Of the nest. Yes. Like I'd have never thought my kid went into high school. My kid went into high school at five foot six. Would I have ever guessed four years later that he was going to be six foot three? Big dude, yeah. Like, never would have thought about it. Like, his mom, Korean and Mexican. <laughs> she was maybe five five. You know, me, I'm probably pushing maybe to five nine, five ten if I want to lie back in the day. So, maybe like five seven. Right, something. Exactly. <laughs> five seven. I'm around. What would, asshole. Um, but like I can't talk. <laughs> he can't talk. <laughs> I love the fact that he can talk. I don't yeah. understand that. Uh, I stand behind Angel and I disappear like a shadow. Like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. It's an eclipse, <laughs> right? Exactly. But um, no, it's just funny. I mean, it's like yeah. uh, like what are we doing? I mean, and then like you had brought up something too. I mean, yeah. if if you guys want to keep going on this because we can talk all day, <laughs> is that um, 
Basketball's yeah. over. I'm, I got the rest of the night free. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego State's Crack. going to the Final Four. I what, got who brought days. Who, who, who brought beer to campus? <laughs> um, but like, like another thing was that that you had just brought up is like depending on which school programs you go to. Yep. Like if I go to a certain program, let's say Choya, okay, love Virgil, love the school, whatever. You know, I'm not saying anything negative. I could be a four year like varsity player. If I just have my wits amongst me because they're looking for kids. So people get that whole conversation going. It's like, yeah. well, you know, my kids, my kids played varsity four years in a row. Okay, what school did he go to? Now, if you sat there and said he played four years of, you know, varsity straight, went to South Point, that's yeah. a different conversation. Right. And that's where they went. That's where both of them went. Well, cool and, for and, them. And, and, and like I said, it, it, all credit to them. Like, I will never. Oh, no, and I'm not, for, not shots towards your no, kids. No, no, but, but I'm saying, like, like, those boys, they busted their tails. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they, they, you know, I've talked to them. I've talked to them. You know, I, I talk to them a lot. You know, I and, just and I they just... give me updates on everything. They go, the kids live in the weight room. Like they, they, they don't stop working, and that's what needs to happen. Instead of instead of trying to take a shortcut and and stay back exactly. and, and and score go grind you know, it score fifty points playing basketball in a youth program or. Hitting, you know, three home runs a game, staying back, you know, in the little league, scoring, you know, six touchdowns a game in youth football, you know, what I mean, just because you want to stay back because, and and I, I honestly, you know, it's whatever they can get, they can, people can get pissed this, if they want, but this, I, I think it has a lot. I, I say it has a lot to do with the youth coaches and whatever sport it is, looking so yeah. at at having a, a loaded team, right, and being scared to coach the next group. I'll give you, you know? a perfect example. Yesterday in in in, uh, in Gilbert, when I went yeah. to Cactus Yards, OJ's team, George Garza was there, yeah. and I said, "Is this twelve U?" He said, "No, it's eleven U." I said, "Man, some of these kids are kind of small for 11. He goes, "No, we got nine and ten year old players. Yeah. That's the bulk of our team. We have very few eleven year olds, and that's what you want. I mean, you want to put them in almost an uncomfortable situation, not not to you know to make them." You know, not, not trust themselves or not believe in themselves, but you know, I'll give you a softball example. Your kid's nine and she's batting six hundred. She has no business playing at a nine-year-old level. Yeah, put her up at ten, eleven, maybe even twelve. Challenge them. Challenge them. The pitchers are faster. The plays faster. The kids are faster. Make uh, them uncomfortable until they acclimate themselves to it. They're going to be a better athlete. But once again, yeah, yeah. I think what it comes down to it's the market. We are not the market to do this. It doesn't, like, if I can hold my kid back four years and college coaches won't give a shit about this market. Yeah. Like, it's just not the market. Until we start getting kids to start becoming beacons towards our community and going to schools, staying at them, being successful, drawing attention to our market, it doesn't matter. Like, we can't have a kid rush off to freaking... You know, like, like for instance, Texas. Okay, that was a freak of nature. Yeah, that's a once-in-a-generation athlete, Bijan. Yeah. yeah. But, but, like, we need kids to stick at, for instance, western New Mexico. Stick there. Stay there. Succeed. Draw that market to come look at us. We need markets like New Mexico State to come over here. UTEP. These schools are for you. This is funny. Because I get parents all the time, well, I don't want my baby to go too far. Don't want my baby to go too far. <laughs> yeah. Let them fly out so of the nest. So <laughs> you'll send your kid yeah. up to Phoenix, right? Let's say Ottawa, you know, ACU, stuff like that. It's two and a half hours drive. West of New Mexico's three. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, is that half hour worth 60 grand? Because I guarantee you ACU and Ottawa costs... 60 grand over a period of four years more than Western New Mexico does. But we don't want to send it like, no, they want to be in Phoenix. They want to be in Phoenix. Is this okay? We'll accept Phoenix. Yeah. We don't want to accept schools that are around us and start building pipelines to help the kids behind us. We'd rather just stay home and give up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. And it's been, yeah. it's been quite a few, it's been decades since we had schools that were juggernauts. You know, you had the yeah. Amphite, you know, teams under Vern Friedley. South Point's been South Point, and they've always been good since God was a kid. But, yeah. you know, you looked at the Sunnyside, uh, you know, a few years after I graduated, the Sunnyside teams, 
You had John Horton, you had David Adams, you had Jerry Beasley, you had uh, Freddie Sims. Yeah. All went D1 out of one school. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. You know, and I find you had the Bates brothers, the Bates and, brothers. And, and, you know, and Ricky Ellison and Jimmy Cron and, and that type of thing. But you don't see that. And I don't know if it's in, check me if I'm wrong, Chris, I don't know if it's in fact that it's open enrollment now and you can kind of go where you want. Back when you and I were in yeah. school, you went to the school that was the closest to Your you. Your district, yeah. So, you know, but you don't see that down here in Tucson anymore with just the juggernaut teams. They had a little bit with Sienega when they had uh, Jamari and them, but they were just, you know, they were one of the toughest teams and they were good. Yeah. But, um, you know, you just, other you, than South Point, you don't see that. You know what I'd like to see? Is I would like to see schools start that whole, like, you know how it's like, hey, look, they won, like, we'll give them this, like, yeah, this is a strong program, whatever. Put into that 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 whole equation, how many kids did they get to college? Right. I want to start seeing. That's the barometer. Instead of, instead of yeah. sitting there and wins, losses, I want to see how many college coaching staff or how many college, like, you know, I mean, high school, co- high school coaching staffs and all that stuff get kids to schools. It's like, let's use that as an equation. It's like, yeah. oh, well, how many schools? Because you go back, Pat Nugent, right? Pat Nugent on that, uh, I think it was even on his COVID year, he had like a handful of kids. Yeah. Um, you had like schools like Sabino, handful of kids. Like w- once we go back to that 31 and en- that 31 team, like kids that, that are going off, where did they come from? Let's start holding coaches accountable for that. Not only just coaches, because that's not fair either. Like parents need to be educated on the process. And our parents are dumb when it comes to the process. And I don't mean that to, to belittle parents. We're clueless because we're not getting guidance from they don't anything. have a lot of they don't have a lot of avenues to find out what needs to no, be. No, but done. dude, that's yeah. you wanna you wanna know something? About six years ago, I was a dad. And I was sitting there going like, I'm going to post everything I learned. And that's exactly what started So AZ Football. Yeah. Is because I was dumb. I, I never played football, which is a constant joke for me. It's like I'll laugh because I'm like, yo, I got one of the most informative football pages in Arizona. <laughs> that's true. Like, I asked him to do yeah. color analysis on that. And I'm like, I never, never play. He goes, I never play football. Yeah, I don't I'm know what dumb. that guy is, what, what position that is. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I'll go fact check. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go find numbers. Uh, it's just funny because, like, I will. I'll sit there and I'll talk to coaches. I'll be like, yeah, man. They're like, hey, who should we be playing this year? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> You know, I never played, right? <laughs> like, it's like, but it's funny because, like, if you really want to make a difference in something, you can make a difference. And honestly, the nice thing about social media, the platforms such as, like, you know, even your show now, uh, this is these are places where people can come out and be like, hey, look, I have questions. Can you answer them? If not, can we find the answers? You're like, there's no yeah. more excuses for being stupid. There's no excuse for it. I know that we have yeah. a couple of uh, scouting services that watch uh, some of our shows, not all of them, and and obviously they can't tell the athletic ability when they're sitting in a chair. But what they want to do, and this is a lot of things, this is a lot of times what makes or breaks a scholarship. How do you handle yourself as a person? Are you goofing around on Bill's show, or you know, are you are you being serious when he asks you a question? Uh, you know, we ask funny questions, but I ask a lot of hard hitting questions to to yeah. make them think. And yeah. uh, College Sports Advocates one, and, and Dream Sports Network is another. And we've sent quite a few names over to them. And then once what they do, what they do, yeah. you know, is, is up to them. But, you know, we try to give them the road. We open the door. Here's the pathway. Yes. But at the end of the day, it's got to come down to that student wanting it. You know, just like the no-shows at the at the National Football Foundation. That just is so frustrating. Because yeah, well, Bill does it. ask some silly questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Chris, what is your favorite hamburger spot? What That's kind a, of dinosaur would you be? <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I'm sorry. The spot has been placed. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, I just yeah. I don't like it making like a job interview. Yeah, That's why yeah, you kind of mix no. it up. And, and that's why when I have the, the kids on here, you know, in um, on previous shows and stuff, I, you know, I try to get them a little bit comfortable with talking. You know, um, sometimes the kids use a lot of cliches that they hear on, yeah. you know. But when they get run into, you know, bigger uh, uh, media outlets, bigger, bigger things. Like, I mean, like they come on your show. Like, I, I want them to be prepped. I want them to know because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have so many freaking viewers. You have so many things like it's going to get out there. It's going to. 
it's going to get out their souls and, and, and somebody's going to come across these kids and they're going to see and they're going to, oh, this kid talks, he talks good. He, he you know, he, and, uh, um, he knows what the kids know, what they're talking about when they're talking. And that's good that, that, you know, that, that always helps out. Right. Yeah. But, between all of our yeah. social media outlets with uh five, two Oh six Oh two locker room. And then, you know, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and, 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 the, and our website, we have a, almost 15,000 followers, yeah. you know, but we try to get the, you know, we want to send you the information, what you do with it hopefully is positive, but you know, it's our job to at least let you know what time it is. Yeah. yeah we can't definitely. be stupid anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, like we, we, you just get back to it. Like there's enough things starting to, so, to summer in the pot, like whether, you know, it's this, you know, podcast show or this podcast show or this athletic trainer or that athletic trainer or these coaches or whatever the hell it is yeah we're we're in a day where social media is here and we can all start networking like like networking with each other so there's no more reason or excuses to be ignorant yeah ask i guarantee you there's a mom or a dad that's sitting there clueless about the question you're wondering that wants you to ask the question. Like, honestly, that's why we say the truth. Yeah. Say the truth. Why? Because, like, honestly, you got somebody over there going, like, well, I just wish they would have freaking said the truth. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's honestly all we have to do now. Yeah. And, and I'm hey, sure hey. that you've gotten hate mail just like oh, that. I always get it. I, get, you know. I always get phone calls I, I like, uh, was, here you go. He pulled, that was just like his Will Smith moment right, right there from concussion. Let Tell the just, truth. Uh, Tell, it, Tell the truth. <laughs> Let me slap you. I'm going to slap <laughs> you. <laughs> But yeah, so Bill, who who was one of the person that did, did you look up to anybody um, in media or anything like you know? Mm-hmm. Did you you know say like, man, that guy's good. Like, I wanna you know, I wanna do something like that. You ben know? Scully. Ben Scully. Ben yeah. Scully from the Dodgers. I used to, uh, and and once again, I'm I'm dating myself. <laughs> Chris, and, and Chris Kidney. Yeah. And Chris Kidney. <laughs> um, I'm dating myself, but you know, back when I was a child. Uh, you know, my parents would say, you know, go to bed at an 8 or 8.30 bedtime and stuff. I would have like a transistor radio underneath my pillow listening to KTUC in the Dodger game because, you know, back then you had yeah. one one baseball game a, a week on Saturday, the Saturday game of the week with Joe Gary's Viola and, yeah. you know, and all that. But I would listen to Vince Scully just almost, I'd almost listen to 162 games that he did. Jeez, yeah. Dick Enberg is another one. Um it, uh, up in Phoenix, uh, Al McCoy for the Suns, and Al's still Suns. doing it. He's his final season. God bless him. But uh, those are the guys that I really looked up to. And it's funny. I should have probably brought a, a, my senior yearbook and said, you know, I always ask you the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, I didn't yeah. say I wanted to work at the fire department, which I ended up doing. But we don't I, want you, know, you to pull out the papyrus. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the, exactly. But you know, I said I want to be a sport. I want to be a sports broadcaster. You know, and. And it's funny because I didn't do that until 2016. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I worked in public safety. I worked in uh, restaurants. I worked for, uh, you know, Air Touch, which became Verizon. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did a lot of technical work. And then when, like I said, when the stars, you know, and, or excuse me, the citizen went out of business, I hey, here's my opportunity to make a difference. And, uh I wouldn't change anything. It's been, there's been some up and down. There's been hate mails. There's been this and that. But overall, the joy that I get to see the smile on the kid's face, whether they're, you know, fifth or sixth graders or they're, you know, professional athletes of Sugar Skulls or or some of the other teams we do, uh, you know, that's worth it to me. And, you know, I tell the parents, oh, my kid had so much fun. Several parents was like, you know, they they went home like they were just on ESPN. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, that kind of threw me back, and I was like, "Well, we're, we're not that cool," but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, but that makes me feel good, yeah. and uh, you know, and at the same time, I have fun. Yeah, uh, you know, just with some of the answers. I mean, you've had you know your kids on, and some of the answers you never know what's coming out of their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to send a shout out to me, son. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess this this would, this would probably be my my last question, and this is our question that you know is is you know for for. People watching and who will view it later, you know, we'll, we'll put this on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, what would be um, something you tell young kids, young journalists or young kids that want to be um, in the in the media um, doing doing what you do? What, what would be something you would tell them? Uh, 
first and foremost, you got to get grades. Yeah. Um, it's you know it's to be in the media. I know Pueblo's got a like a radio station, and and uh, Sienega's yes. got a good uh, audio, visual, and media uh, center out there in Vail. But nothing, everything revolves around grades. You can't be successful adult without good grades. Uh, there's so many times kids are like, oh, I want to play in the NFL. It's like, okay, so after you're 30 years old and you're too old to play, you know, what do you want to do? Oh, well, I'm just going to live off my money. It's like yeah. less than 1% of NFL players don't ever have to work again. The Tom Brady's are not common. The Michael Jordans aren't common. The LeBron's, you know, you have to work. Look at all the guys that are on my staff that played in the NFL. David, Jerry, John Kaiser, they all have jobs. Yes. And, you know, so I would tell them that. But also I would tell them, just like in sports, it's got to be fun. You know, you have to enjoy it. It's not for everybody. You know, you're going to have highs and lows like you do have in anything in life. But uh, it's got to be fun. We try to make it fun in our internship program. Uh, but I tell them, the first day that they come to me, I said, I, this is what I tell them. I said, I will work as hard as you work. I'm not going to chase you. I'm not going to keep track of you. I'm not going to try to, to see what you do. You, you know, you, I want you checking in with me two, three times during the week. Give me your schedule. I understand you have another job, and and that's totally cool. But I don't want to have to chase you. Hey, can you help me cover the sunny side game on Friday? Or hey, can you do the sugar skulls with me or something? Yeah. You know, I will put the effort in that I see the effort coming back. So, I think the biggest, uh, the most important point I could probably do is if you're going to do something, do it a hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Well. It's <clears throat> No, oh, well, on 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 behalf of uh, the coach's office, love the um, show. <laughs> all the guys here at Pop Studio, you know, we got Chris, Diego, in the back, um, and everyone in Tucson, and 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 for the youth, and and for everybody involved in sports, and anyone that you've ever helped cover, and and stuff. I mean, you you you've always been there at a drop of a hat for, for for myself with with events that I've done, you know throughout Tucson, you know, we, we want to thank you for what you do and for you to to, to um, start this social media frenzy with, with the sports with the with, in Tucson, in Southern, you know, not just Southern Arizona. Tucson is a, it's a big part because mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing, oh, you know, you guys, we're, we're going to be on the show on Tuesday. Make sure you guys put your jerseys on and this and that, you're clean and, you know, stuff like that. The kids get excited. The families get excited. And what you do for the community is awesome, man, and 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 um, you know, I look up to you, you know, doing this stuff. I, I try to, you know, try to do a, as good a job as I I possibly can because I know, you know, you set a standard out here, and um, um, we appreciate you, and and thank you for coming on the show today, and and like I said, thank you for everything you do. Oh, it's been my appreciate honor. You. I mean, uh, Chris's show, your show, yeah. uh, some of the other podcasts that go on. I I'm a big fan of those. I'm not. Yeah. One of these media people is like, oh, well, if you don't watch us, you know, I'm not going to help those guys out. You know, yeah. they're on their own. You know, watch Chris's show. Watch this show. Yeah. Watch my show. Anybody else that has a sports podcast that, that's doing it for the right reason, not to glorify themselves, but to help the kids coming up. Because, you know, I, I always tell them, it's like, you're the stars of the future. I had my day in sports, and that was a long time ago. Let's help you out. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So do you have any shout outs? That you want to give out there? Uh, yeah, a couple of them. Uh, Garrett Ratesman, just a really good mentor. Uh, he's given me such invaluable information and and advice. Uh, Ramon De La Osa, obviously, just a, a class act uh, on the diamond and off the diamond. Um, who else? Oh, my, all the people that work for me, uh, you know, at 520 Sports Talk, at 602 Sports Talk. Uh, Brandy Shriver, three-time All-American and... Uh, Three-time national championships at Arizona softball is is my co-host up in up in Phoenix, oh. and then and then of course Andy Taylor with uh, you know just helping us get this started because we would not even be close to where we are at now uh, without Andy's guidance and and his advice and, and just his studio. I mean he put us yeah. on the map. So uh, shout out to those guys. I got one question. Cool. One question before it's over, Bill. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? <laughs> I don't look like this because I have a favorite. I like them all. <laughs> so if it was up to your mom's cooking or fast food, which one would you get rid of? <laughs> well, since mom's not here anymore and I have yeah. to kind of rely on fast food, it's funny because I, I, I'm a good cook, but I just don't like cooking for one person. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. 
I'm so. sorry, got I had <laughs> no, to ask his question. That was great. So. Other than that, like, he might need a ride home. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Well, uh, you know well, what? Let's, you know, Bill, since this is, is your, your visit with you, let's use your phrase to end it all off then. Yes, sir. All right. 520 Sports Talk, Southern Arizona Sports on the cutting edge with a twist. It's a wrap.